that's gonna give you hot water, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video because I'm gonna tell you how to extend the life of that water heater, maybe even double its life expectancy. Stick around, smash that thumbs up button, and hit that subscribe button because you're not gonna to wanna to miss this video. heater right here this is made by A.O. Smith it's actually a cutaway that we actually cut out with a uh, sawzall blade this water heater is exactly seven years old take a look down here at the rating plate you're gonna see the model and the manufacturer date and it was manufactured on March 12 2015 that puts us seven years old right almost eight years old we took this out about a week ago it had no maintenance no service whatsoever but it failed. Why did it fail? Lack of maintenance. Pan around over here, let me show you. If you take a look inside, right? A lot of people don't know it, but you have this nice big thick foam insulation here. Well, that's just for energy efficiency reasons, but a lot of people don't know. It's actually made of steel, right? They put this special enamel coating on it, and we'll talk about why it's so dirty in a minute. They put this special enamel coating on it where you actually have this epoxy resin on there, right? And that's what gives it that quote unquote gas line, glass lined heater, right? But it's actually coated with enamel. Now disregard what else you see there right now, but let's review how this works. Water heater, usually located in the basement of your home. It could be in a closet. Sometimes you have a electric water heater where you have power heating elements. This is, this is a gas-fired water heater. It can run on propane or natural gas. But let's talk about how this works. Typically, on the right-hand side, if you're facing in front of it, the left-hand, the right-hand side, you have cold water inlet. And that usually feeds into a dip tube. If you look inside the heater, this little aqua blue tube, that's called a dip tube. And that allows the water, the incoming fresh water, cold water, to go inside the tank to the bottom. Right? And where, the bottom of the tank, we have two components. At the bottom of the tank, we have a, a control valve or the thermostat, okay? And below that, we have the burner or combustion chamber, okay? That's where the fuel mixes with oxygen and it burns that, that gas to give you a nice flame, which then heats the bottom of the tank. The exhaust gases go up the flue or the exhaust chamber, where then it goes into your chimney or it gets vented outside your home, okay? So that exhaust chamber or that flue and the bottom of the tank is how the, the flame gets transferred to the steel tank, which then gets absorbed by the water and giving you hot water. Now, we also have a couple of little safety things. This is called a temperature and pressure relief valve or T and P valve. It is the primary safety device of this water heater. Typically, this is called a drip leg and it goes down to a couple inches off the floor generally. If you don't have one of these, talk to your plumber or go to your DIY hardware store, get a piece of three quarter inch pipe. You don't want to shorten this and you want to bring it down to the floor. A lot of cases, this is next to our, this is next to like a washer and dryer or maybe even your furnace or heating system. When this opens, it opens for a reason. I don't want to be there when it's, when it's open, if it opens and there's no drip leg there. Just saying. So in summary, every water heater regardless of electric, indirect, right? Or a water heater that uses fuel, whether it be propane, natural gas, or oil, everyone has a relief valve. And you must make sure that it's pointed down and it terminates close to the floor. And never, ever, ever restrict it, put a hose on it, or cap it ever, okay? Now, let's talk about how to extend the life of this water heater. Come around here. And you take a look, this is a water heater that we did not modify. The only thing we did was cut it open with a reciprocating saw and a blade and we cut it open. Now listen, it's not the neatest thing. I'm not like that guy, Bob Veal on this old house. Someone just gave him a nice water heater to cut open. I cut it with brute force, right? Take a look inside. This thing right here, right? This thing right here covered with all this calcium. Look at this, look at this. 
right? It's crumbling apart. This is called the sacrificial anode rod. We'll talk about water filtration in a minute because I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to drink what's inside this water heater, right? But let me show you what this normally looks like and what it does. So over here, I have a couple anode rods for new water heaters, okay? This is a magnesium anode rod. It actually goes on a ream water heater and extends the life of the water heater from six to 10 years. But this is what it looks like. Does this look like that? I don't think so. We also have ones for the indirect. This is for Whale McLean. Also thick, solid, but this is a sacrificial anode rod. And what it does is the minerals or the water, once you attack that rod first, then when that's gone, it's gonna start attacking the enamel coating of the steel tank, right? So if you wanna extend the life of your water heater, you wanna change your anode rod. And, and if you have a water heater like this, you maybe want to consider water filtration. Up next, let me show you how to change your anode rod. It's very easy and it's a good little weekend project. So we're going to change this anode rod and we have a cut open here. So you're going to see how we're going to do it. But the first thing you're going to do, you have a valve above the water heater. You're going to want to turn that off. Okay. If you don't have a valve above there, you're going to have to turn off your water main to your home. Um, but you want to turn off the water, isolate the water heater. So no fresh incoming water is coming into it. Once that's closed, you can turn off the gas or the source of fuel, whether that's oil, make turn the power switch off. If it's gas, you have a valve here or a gas, gas cock, what we call. Um, and you want to just isolate the fuel, it's electric, turn off the breaker to it or the switch, for example. And then you're going to take a little hose, or you can take a garden hose, and you're going to hook that up to the bottom drain. There's our drain right here. Okay. And that hose you can put to a bucket, a floor drain, something nearby. Remember, if you're going up upstairs, if you're going up the stairs with the hose, and you're up here, gravity, gravity's not gonna bring it up, okay? So keep in mind, you wanna pick it low. And we don't need to drain the whole entire tank, and I'll tell you why. If we drain the whole entire tank, which you'll want, probably wanna do anyway to flush it out, but I wanna use the weight of the tank, and keep in mind, this is a 50 gallon water heater, if I only want to take out about three or four gallons of that water heater, I want the weight, which is eight pounds per gallon of water. I want that weight to help me use a tool to get out that anode rod. Okay, let's go, come over here. Most times, anode rod is on top. Sometimes it's covered up. In this case, it's right there on top. On the indirect water heater next to me, it actually has a little cover on there. It says anode rod. You want to take the screws off, make it exposed, right? There's our anode rod. Most cases, almost all water heaters use a one and one sixteenth socket, okay? I'm using a half inch drive breaker bar, right? And I got that on there, okay? Now, granted, sometimes they're in a tight confined space, you're not gonna be able to get the breaker bar on there, right? Um, so maybe you can use an impact driver. Again, not everyone has this, but if you're doing this as a DIY, obviously you're mechanically inclined. It may be some of the things you have, uh, hopefully you can use you, you, um, the, the car lug nuts, for example. You can use that. You just need an inch and a qu inch and one sixteenth. I'm going to try to break this off, and again, it's empty tank, but it don't want to go, right? It don't want to go. So what we're going to use a cheater bar, and basically it's all about the leverage, ladies and gentlemen. So here we are, at the cheater bar, and again, there's no uh, there's no um, water in it, so it may be a little hard, but there we go. A little cheater bar right there. Look at that. It's a piece of pipe. Okay. And we're going to continue this process until the anode is out. Okay. Now. Now, obviously, during this video, we had the luxury of actually seeing what's inside of it. Okay. You know the condition of that anode rod is already. So it may be hard to take it out of it. And if you're forcing it like this, well, maybe there's a reason why they tell you to check this every couple of years, right? Because in this particular case, it's not gonna come out unless I really try to get it out of there like that, okay? Now you see all that calcium buildup on this anode, right? That's not good for it because the water is not attacking the magnesium that's on there. It's coated with, with calcium, okay? And you're not gonna have a functional anode rod. so. If you read the manuf manuf manufacturer's manual on the water heater, 
they're going to say it should be checked periodically. I'm not saying every six months, but maybe have it installed. One of the first things you're going to do when it's installed, make, put, make yourself a little checklist, a post-it note on the water heater. Write the date of installation and a reminder that a year from today, you're going to flush the water heater out. Okay? That's the, one of the things you want to do from year one is flush the water heater. You're going to take a garden hose at the bottom of the heater. All you're going to do, a garden hose and put it somewhere where it can discharge safely. You're going to open up that valve from the bottom of the water heater and just discharge that out for 10, 15 minutes. Any sediment or any minerals that are accumulating at the bottom of the tank, take a look at this one here, right? Look at all of that sediment in there, right? That is gross, right? But I'm going to take a handful of that. Look at it. That is what's at the bottom of this water heater. And that is what you want to flush out on an annual basis. Now, I don't recommend, I do not recommend that the water heater is an established water heater has been installed for several years. Don't start flushing it out because sometimes all that buildup is basically eating into the, the steel of the tank. And imagine pulling the scab off your skin. You're going to bleed. Well, you can bleed, but you can reheal. On a water heater, it's steel. You're going to have a, a tank failure imminently. Okay, keep that in mind. What if I don't have enough clearance to get the anode rod out? Great question. My cameraman, Peter, thank you so much. Great question. Apprentice in training, by the way. We're hoping in the next couple months that he'll actually be in a truck uh, doing HVAC. Excellent work. Excellent. Uh, great question. So, you know what? A lot of times these water heaters are installed in a basement. And unless you're living like in a Taj Mahal or a mansion, you know, with 12 foot ceilings in your basement, you're kind of like limited what headspace. And a lot of times, like I just did one just uh, last week, last Friday, actually, there's ductwork or plenum right above it. So let me tell you what I did, right? When I was taking out the old anode rod, and now I wish I didn't take my, my, hand, my gloves off, but when I was taking out the old anode rod, I was actually bending it out along the way like this, and which is fine, right? But also keep in mind, every time you bend that or disturb this, you're gonna have fragments fall to the bottom of the, of, of the tank. So you're gonna wanna pay extra close attention to flushing it out and possibly even draining it at that point. But getting the new one in is not so easy. And that's why, we have these here. Look at that, guys. They're like nunchucks. And you can actually put in piece after piece and you still have the same effect. It has a, a braided steel uh, cable that's built into the anode rods or the magnesium uh, rods here. And that allows us to get it in there. And th these aren't that expensive. You could purchase something like this for under a hundred bucks. The anode rod also on the under 100 bucks, but let me ask you what's cheaper. Anode rods every say three or four years or replacing the water heater in this case in seven and a half years. What's cheaper? Do the math. All right, so in summary, you have a water heater. You wanna maintain it. You wanna start maintenance from year one. Uh, every six months, you wanna lift this up Right, make sure it opens and closes properly. Right, if you take a look inside, you pan around here, take a look what's going on, what's growing on that TMP valve. Right, look at this, look at that. All right, you want to make sure that you that you throttle or open and close this. Now, keep in mind that it's man made, it's mechanical, it's subject to failure at every given point. But if you read the instructions, a little tag that originally came on there it tells you. Right? To check that, test for operation on a periodic basis. I like to do it every six months, right? But you're gonna do that from day from day one, year one. You're not gonna do that year eight and expect it not to close. And expect it to close, because it's not gonna close and you're gonna have a continual dribble coming out of it, like an old man with uh, a problem. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, <laughs> right? So you wanna check that every six months, open and close it. If it doesn't close, don't panic, ladies and gentlemen, don't panic. Close the valve, isolate the water, turn up the source of fuel for it, and then have it replaced you know, by a licensed plumber who's qualified to do so, or, you know, pick up a replacement part. But remember, under no circumstances are you to put in something that's different than what's here. This is called a temperature and pressure relief valve. It will open at a 210 degrees of temperature and 150 PSI, okay? It is a safety valve. God forbid the gas valve should malfunction and overheat, it's gonna let out near boiling water. Keep that in mind. Number two, you wanna drain the water heater or flush it out every year annually clearing out all that sediment out of the tank and every two or three years you follow the procedures like i just mentioned in this video check the anode rod if it's covered with calcium try to remove the calcium 
it may be worth it just to replace the anode rod at that point. Keep in mind, once you do this and you replace the anode rod, by the way, real quick, right? The anode rod, that threading here, or the threading on this one, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, where is it? Where'd it go? There it is. We're gonna put, you could put some uh, pipe joint compound on there, like Pro Dope or Megalock, or you can use Teflon tape. Now, some plumbers are gonna say, what are you doing telling them people to use Teflon tape? If you look at Reams instructional videos on their website and a few of the manufacturers, they suggest putting on Teflon tape or PTFE tape. It's fine. You'll still have the connection there that's necessary. But if you really wanna be 100% and you're worried about maybe it's not making good contact or electrical continuity, use the Pro Dope or Pipe Dope. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, you've just changed your anode rod. You flushed out some sediment out of the bottom of it. Uh, when you open up the faucets or taps in your home, you may get some sputtering or some air coming out of it. Um, it's normal because you took out water and now you have replaced that water with air in there. And the piping also is gonna have air in it. So when you open up the faucets, I would suggest going to an unaerated faucet, maybe like a tub, for example, or maybe even better, a laundry sink that could be adjacent to it. Take the little aerator out, open the hot and cold water and let all that crap come out of it because chances are you're going to get some of that sucked into the hot water supply piping and it could clog up your faucet. Any questions, feel free to email me, mike at mikeypipes.com. My name is Mike Dyke. I'm the licensed master plumber for Pipe Doctor Home Services. We're based in Valley Stream, New York, and my phone number is 516-348-6300. If you live in our service territory, I'd be more than glad to send myself or one of my amazing team members, family members to you and solve your problems. We do plumbing, heating, and central air conditioning. We'd love to help you as well. Thank you so much for watching. Be well, God bless, stay safe. Thank you.